ಪರಮೇಶ್ವರ ಮಹಾಸದಾ ಶಿವ ಪರ ಶಿವ ಸಮಾರಂಭ ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದೇಶ್ವರಿ ಪರಶಕ್ತಿ ಮಧ್ಯಮ ಅಸ್ಮಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಪರ್ಯಂತ ವಂದೇ ಗುರು ಪರಂ ಪರ ಇದೇ ಅಂದಂ ಸೊ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಬೇಸಿಕ್ಲಿ ದ ವಿಡಿಯೋ ದಟ್ ಶುಡ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಬಿನ್ ಅಪ್ಲೋಡೆಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ರೆಕಾರ್ಡೆಡ್ ಆಸ್ ದ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ವಿಡಿಯೋ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ಯೂಟ್ಯೂಬ್ ಚಾನಲ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಬೇಸಿಕ್ಲಿ um how did i end up being a hindu monk how did i end up uh, being with swamiji a disciple of swamiji and living swamiji's teachings i'll give you a kind of a idea a rough idea of the life i had before meeting swamiji and like why did i choose to follow swamiji so i was born um as a as a catholic actually uh, as i was a child i used to go to church i used to actually assist the priest i used to give the wine and the bread to the priest during the ceremonies so i was actually involved in church until a certain time i think it was approximately maybe 12 13 um and then at that time for whatever reason we were not happy much about the experience we were getting at the church and then um basically i disconnected and my entire family disconnected and then i started to play video games and at that time it used to be diablo 2 then it went into warcraft 3 then it went into um world of warcraft and all these things and i started to be an intense video gamer mmorpgs especially and, and then i went through school and whatever and then i went to uh mechanical i studied actually mechanical engineering technology um after uh, high school and as i was studying that i met a guy actually he was japanese from origin but he was born here in canada and he actually uh, made me discover a martial art a chinese martial art which is which was uh, shaolin kung fu and then through this i kind of discovered uh buddhist monks because this martial art is practiced by buddhist monks and he was basically the one who initiated me into this path where i rediscovered spirituality in the form of buddhism and i started to connect to buddha and different teachings and i was highly uh, intensely practicing this martial art and i did so for four years and it was amazing uh in different ways it was really the thing that was giving me the most fulfillment in my life at that time and as i was uh practicing this martial art i went to university also and i was uh, studying finance and business and then at some point um as i was studying finance and business i entered in conflict with some of the ideologies that my uh teachers had and there were three uh, actually thought currents that they shared that i just um i couldn't digest and so at that time because i was already uh, learning about buddha and all that i already started to realize that you know we have fears and these fears are destroying our lives and then we have to um, you know go beyond that so we can live a better more fulfilled life and the first thought current i got uh, from the macro economy actually teacher was that life is all about money if money is not there life cannot happen So when I when he was sharing these this thought current I obviously completely disconnected I was like this guy's an idiot uh okay right now we're, we're we're functioning like that because this is the system and the structure we have built but this structure can easily be dismantled and we rec- we can recreate another structure that can work differently and that was the first thing that really threw me off as I was studying I was actually studying also in a good university in Montreal at that time uh for that Um then I went uh, uh I became conflicted with the marketing teacher as well and he he was basically sharing the thought current which is the basic underlying thought current of marketing which is awakening latent fears in people in order to control them and to push them to purchase uh things to consume uh the items we wish them to consume and then same thing at that time because I was learning about these fears and all that then i realized this is so cunning i mean we're already struggling because we have so many fears and so so many things we consciously decide not to attend to and then we're just basically playing with that in order to make money and i i it just felt so cheap to me it was such a cheap way of engaging with life and such a cunning way of relating to society and people and then i was um then also at, you know that was the second turn off i had uh while i was studying and then i met the ultimate turn off which was <laughs> my finance teacher and one time in one class 
um, we were doing an equation to calculate we were learning how to calculate stocks on the stock market or something like that and then the, the teacher uh, was sharing an equation on the board and then one of the students who had already experience in the stock market he was like but uh, sir in this equation we are not taking in consideration this we are not taking in consideration that and he was basically highlighting flaws in the equation and then the teacher said actually you're right these things are not taken into account but he says this is still the formula we use in general and then he said uh, he said the ultimate blunder if you ask me he said but it is better to be wrong with everybody else than to be right alone so when I heard that 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 was it I, <laughs> I could not <laughs> that was just that was just too much um, that was just too much and then I was like screw this <laughs> there's no I don't I'm not interested in uh, living a life like that or engaging with these thought currents or even learning from people who are operating from these thought currents and then actually I disconnected from uh, university after I think a year and a half of studying I was studying business and finance and after a year and a half I dropped and then I was planning to go to China actually to continue to practice uh, the Shaolin Kung Fu the martial art I was doing because that was the only thing that made sense to me at that time um, but as I was planning to go to China to the Shaolin, famous Shaolin Monastery, I met this uh, Vietnamese traditional doctor who was also a practitioner and a master of martial arts. And somehow I ended up not going to China and I just started to work with him as an assistant. And um, I did that for two years. And throughout these two years, naturally, I went through a lot of experiences and all these things. And he brought me twice to Vietnam for vacation at two different occasions. And at the second occasion that I went to Vietnam, I was uh, really contemplating on my life and I was thinking like, you know, what am I really doing? I had a good life in Canada, but um, I, it was not satisfying. I had that boredom. I was still playing video games, but a lot less uh, at that time because I was working a lot. Actually, I was working from like 9 a.m. to like 9 p.m. Uh, and I was traveling like from the suburbs to the city which was like a two hour drive in the morning and two hour drive in the night so it was like a very very intense life at that time I was not even getting paid and um, he was only basically I was only asking for lunch for him to offer me lunch um, I was working for free and I ended up in the, in the two years that I worked for him I ended up like giving him like eight thousand dollars because my pre-monastic family actually did uh, had gathered some funds for me for the future and that also created some kind of conflicts within a little bit with my parents at that time and uh, so anyways after these two years I just I was just in Vietnam and I was actually in uh, Saigon in Ho Chi Minh in one of the famous parks and I met this Australian guy and this guy just told me like you know if you like it you can just stay here you're a foreigner you speak English uh, you can easily find a job to teach English and you can just renew your visa and stay here and then I was like, you know what, let's do it. So I just, I just told my boss that I was quitting and that I was going to stay in Vietnam and I was going to uh, find a way to live here. And I did so for two years, actually. I did teach English there for two years. And, um, and then I lived a completely different life, which was pretty amazing. Culture was different, food was different, people were different, the lifestyle was different. Many things that I could not have in Canada, I had there. For example, I was driving a motorbike, I was living next to the beach. Um, it was very easy for me at that time to flirt with girls and all these things, like all these different uh, fantasies that I had uh, that were fulfilled. And I had, I, I, I had two girlfriends also during that time period of two years. And, um, but after two years, the same boredom that I experienced in Canada uh, came back in Vietnam. And then I realized that I had a good life in Canada because I, you know, I, my family was supportive and I never really missed anything. And then I went to Vietnam, I experienced a completely different lifestyle. But yet again, that same experience come back, comes back. And then I realized that whatever lifestyle change I do, um, that will not solve the problem and at that time I started actually at that time many things happened suddenly I lost the taste for meat and and I stopped completely uh, meat eating I, I, I just somehow I cannot say disgusted but I just stopped eating meat and my body just didn't respond to meat anymore 
and also um, I stopped having all kind, all the relationships, physical relationships I used to have with my girlfriend, and then I, I was starting to plan to. Uh, I was actually learning how to become self-sustainable in in the way that learning how to build your own house, you know, create your own vegetables. And I was planning to buy a land in the countryside in Vietnam and then build my house and you have a kind of a small fruit farm that would allow me, that would sustain my body until I would uh, uh, reach enlightenment. And I was planning to meditate there uh, for the rest of my life. And then my Purvash, my pre-monastic mother actually was totally against it and she was like no no you don't know what you're getting yourself into your wife will never agree because in order to do that that was the trick in order to do that I would have need I um, I had to get married because in order to buy the land in Vietnam I had to get married and then my pre-monastic mother was like no no she, she doesn't understand what you want to do that will not work trust me and uh, but I didn't listen and just before uh, the big shift I, I went around like half of Vietnam with my motorbike I was looking for lands in different regions and then after that somehow my mom convinced me to come back to Canada because I had to renew my visa also at, at some point and somehow she convinced me and then when I came back um, we were talking and she was telling me like um, you know you do whatever you want but I'm not going to support your decision and if you do that then uh, you know I'm not gonna I'm just gonna follow my spiritual path and follow Swamiji because she was already connected to Swamiji for some years now and she said like I'm just gonna follow Swamiji and work on my spiritual evolution and growth and then I felt a little bit weird because I felt like you know I used to have a very good relationship with my mother and at that time I saw like it was basically the path where uh, separating and I was wondering like okay is that really worth it and all that then I sat with myself and at that time also I discovered Ramana Marshi at the end because I was listening to other spiritual masters I did listen to Osho I, I watched a lot of his discourses on YouTube and then at the end I, I, I ended up uh, reading about Ramana Marshi and the first time I saw Ramana Marshi like I, many other people I've heard when they when I looked at his eyes I, I saw the cosmos actually I saw the universe and then that really intrigued me. I, I, I couldn't understand how uh, a look could be so expressive. And, and then the desire to see Arunachala started to happen in me. Arunachala is one of the famous holy hills uh, in India and it is the birth town of Swamiji also, uh, Tiruvannamale. And uh, this desire was there. So at that time when I was thinking, at it, uh, I was in my room and I was thinking like why I don't want to go to uh, to India, why I don't want to go see Swamiji. And then deep inside me, I just had this voice saying like, no, I don't want to, that's all. Like a completely illogical response, just like a, a child throwing tantrum and just saying no to life. And then when I heard that no, I just thought like, whoa, that sounds pretty fishy. So at that time I decided, you know what, I'm gonna go do Inner Awakening. And because I did, tell my mom in the past that one day I would do Inner Awakening but I never felt the calling and I was not really connected to Swamiji at that time and then at that time I um, I decided to go to Inner Awakening and also one thing that was strange uh, in that time period is that at the end of my stay in Vietnam I started to feel weak my heart was becoming weak and I was having heart pains and I went to the hospital and they couldn't find anything but I felt literally I felt like I was dying I felt the life energy was leaving my heart and it was very strange. So it was, uh, that was still happening at that time. And then when I, I checked the dates of the next Inner Awakening, it was in Varanasi. It was the first Inner Awakening that Swamiji was going to lead in Varanasi. And Varanasi is uh, the day where, uh, the day, it is the city where people get cremated and get liberation. It's one of the most holy city, if not the holiest city uh, in India. And then when I saw that this is the place where people die and get liberated or especially dying because for me at that time it was like a death experience was happening I was like that's it I'm going this is for me and then I started to read uh, Swamji's books and because I was already willing to go to the forest and live like a monk um, I got connected very quickly and at that time I also realized that my plan with my ex-girlfriend uh, to buy land and get married and whatever plan I had in Vietnam was just a total <laughs> it, was a very, it would have been a very bad mistake uh, a big mistake and then I, I, I already I told her everything and she already kind of felt it because she was already telling me like she was afraid that I would become a monk actually <laughs> which, which ended up happening 
and um, so basically I, I, I you know I told her everything and you know I told her whatever I still had in Vietnam she can sell it keep the money and and move on and then I went I started to read some these books to prepare myself and listening to his satsangs to prepare myself for inner awakening and this is where the click really happened as I was reading I was reading a book called here book is here science of living enlightenment that is the book I read and that book was amazing um, as I, there, I had many experiences um, for instance some experiences like one time Swamji was giving an example about Hanuman and then the first time I read that word Hanuman I just I just felt like I knew this word I, I, I know it I don't know why but I knew I knew it, it the, the experience that the word as I was pronouncing the word inside my inner space the experience that was arising it was like a very powerful and very like a, I know this I know this and my Kundalini was like was, was getting awakened just by this and then I was reading all the different truths that Swamiji was talking about and it was as if I already knew all these truths but I had forgotten them and the moment he was talking about them I was like yes that's right yes 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 and then that impacted me very strongly and actually before even going to inner awakening and meeting Swamiji I was 95% sure that I was going to uh, become a sannyas and live the lifestyle of brahmacharya and becoming a monk um, and I was already convinced actually I'd, I had not even met him or even physically experienced him but just by his book and the way he impacted me through his words I already knew that he was in the space I was seeking and he could guide me to that space and so this whole idea of, of living in the countryside and living like meditating the rest of my life just dropped and I was like okay that's all I'm going and I'm going to become a sannyasi a monk and and then that's all and then I went to inner awakening and the whole journey started actually this will be another video um, you know my experience of inner awakening and my experience with Swamiji and his physical presence and all that but uh, yeah so basically this is how I connected to him and it was a very it was a very crazy journey actually if you look at all the different things that I did to my life one thing I can share that is a very powerful cognition that I got and that I believe is entirely responsible for everything that happened to me and all the blessings that I got showered with was I never had fear of dropping the past for experiencing something new I had spent so much time studying mechanical engineering but right after that I just dropped everything and decided to go business and finance I had spent time during business and finance but I just decided to drop and go for the Shaolin Kung Fu experience. I spent so much time for Shaolin Kung Fu experience but I just dropped everything and I went to work for that doctor and uh, he was also teaching me martial arts and then I dropped everything and I lived in Vietnam then I dropped everything and I went to Swamiji and I really believe that uh, one thing one of the big problems I see with people is that when they start to invest invest too much time and too much money into something they are attached to it and they cannot disconnect themselves from it they feel no 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 no. I spend so much time if I leave it will be complete waste or no 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 I spend so much money now if I drop everything it will be complete waste but I truly believe that this thought current is a, is a very strong completion that does not allow you to um, have the breakthrough you're supposed to have the experience the time you invested the money you invested into something it was necessary for you to raise yourself to a certain frequency for you to have a breakthrough that breakthrough leads to something else which leads to something else which leads to something else and which ends up leading you to the master so you know not having not being afraid of dropping the past for the sake of the future I think it's a very very important thing that everybody should cherish and should not be afraid of experiencing and I, I totally believe that this thought current is totally responsible for my growth and my experience of Swamiji and, and me living the life I had and you know showered with all the blessings that I got showered with so with this um, I'll see you guys in another video where I'll be talking more about my experience with Swamiji but this is a kind of a, an idea of uh, who I was and how I became what I became. Don't forget to subscribe, to like and write a comment below.